That's the right way to go. So for anyone who wants to use race to the top to blame or punish teachers, you're missing the point. Our goal isn't to fire or admonish teachers. Our goal is accountability. It's to provide teachers with the support they need to be as effective as they can be and to create a better environment for teachers and students alike. Now, there's also the question of how hard our teachers should push students in the classroom. Nations in Asia and Europe have answered this question, in part by creating standards to make sure their teachers and students are performing at the same high levels throughout their nation. That's one of the reasons that their children are doing better than ours. But here at home, there's often a controversy about national standards, common standards. That violates the principle of local control. Now, there's a history to local control that we need to think about, but, 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 that, but that's the argument. So here's what Race to the Top says. Instead of Washington imposing standards from the top down, let's challenge states to adopt common standards voluntarily from the bottom up. That doesn't mean more standards. It means higher standards, better standards, standards that clarify what our teachers are expected to teach and what our children are expected to learn. So high school graduates are actually prepared for college and a career. I do not want to see young people get a diploma but they can't read that diploma. Now, so far, about 30 states have come together to embrace and develop common standards, high standards. More states are expected to do so in the coming weeks. And by the way, this is different from No Child Left Behind, because what that did was it gave the states the wrong incentives. A bunch of states watered down their standards so that school districts wouldn't be penalized when their students fell short. And what's happened now is at least two states, Illinois and Oklahoma, that lowered standards in response to No Child Behind, No Child Left Behind, are, are now raising those standards back up, partly in response to Race to the Top. And part of making sure our young people meet these high standards is designing tests that accurately measure whether they are learning. Now, here, too, there's been some controversy. When we talk about testing, parents worry that it means more teaching to the test. Some worry that tests are culturally biased. Teachers worry that they'll be evaluated solely on the basis of a single standardized test. Everybody thinks that's unfair. It is unfair. But that's not what Race to the Top is about. What Race to the Top says is, there's nothing wrong with testing. We just need better tests applied in a way that helps teachers and students instead of stifling what teachers and students do in the classroom. Tests that don't dictate what's taught, but tell us what has been learned. Tests that measure how well our children are mastering essential skills and answering complex questions. And tests that track how well our students are growing academically so we can catch when they're falling behind and help them before they just get passed along. Because of Race to the Top, states are also finding innovative ways to move beyond having just a snapshot of where students are and towards a real-time picture that shows how far they've come and how far they have to go. And armed with this information, teachers can get what amounts to a game tape that they can study to enhance their teaching and and their focus on areas where students need help the most. Now, sometimes a school's problems run so deep that you can do the better assessments and the higher standards and a more challenging curriculum, and that's not enough. If a school isn't producing graduates with even the most basic skills, year after year after year after year, Something needs to be done differently. You know, the definition uh, somebody once said of madness is you do the same thing over and over again and keep expecting a different result. If we want success for our country, we can't accept failure in our schools decade after decade. 
And that's why we're challenging states to turn around our 5,000 lowest performing schools. And I don't think it's any secret that most of those are serving African American or Hispanic kids. We're investing over $4 billion to help them do that, to transform those schools. $4 billion, which even in Washington is real money. This isn't about, unlike No Child Left Behind, this isn't about labeling a troubled school a failure and then just throwing up your hands and saying, well, we're giving up on you. It's about investing in that school's future and recruiting the whole community to help turn it around and identifying viable options for how to move forward. Now, in some cases, that's going to mean restarting the school under different management as a charter school, as an independent public school formed by parents, teachers, and civic leaders who've got broad leeway to innovate. And some people don't like charter schools. They say, well, that's going to take away money from other public schools that also need support. Charter schools aren't a magic bullet, but I want to give states and school districts the chance to try new things. If a charter school works, then let's apply those lessons elsewhere. And if a charter school doesn't work, we'll hold it accountable, we'll shut it down. So no, I don't support all charter schools, but I do support good charter schools. I'll give you an example. There's a charter school called Mastery in Philadelphia. And in just two years, three of the schools that Mastery has taken over have seen reading and math levels nearly double, in some cases triple. Shaka Fatah is here, so he knows what I'm talking about. One school called Pickett went from just 14 percent of students being proficient in math to almost 70 percent. Now, and, and, and here's the kicker. At the same time, academic performance improved. Violence dropped by 80 percent. 80 percent. And that's no coincidence. Now, if a school like Mastery can do it, if Pickett can do it, every troubled school can do it. But that means we're going to have to shake some things up, setting high standards, common standards, empowering students to meet them, partnering with our teachers to achieve excellence in the classroom, educating our children, all of them, to graduate ready for college, ready for a career, ready to make most of their lives. None of this should be controversial. There should be a fuss if we weren't doing these things. There should be a fuss if Arne Duncan wasn't trying to shake things up. So Race to the Top isn't simply the name of an initiative. It sums up what's happening in our schools. It's the single most ambitious, meaningful education reform effort we've attempted in this country in generations. And I know there are a number of other steps we need to take to lift up our education system like saving teachers' jobs across this country from layoffs. And I'll continue fighting to take those steps and save those jobs. But I'll also continue to fight for race to the top with everything I've got, including using a veto to pre uh, prevent some folks from watering it down. Now, uh, let, let, let me wrap up by saying this. I know there, there's some who say that race to the top won't work, there are cynics and naysayers who argue that the problems in our education system are too entrenched. They think that we'll just fall back into the same old arguments and divides that have held us back for so long. And it is true, as I've said since I ran for president, and that everybody here knows firsthand, change is hard. I don't know if you've noticed. That's why I've got all this gray hair. Fixing what was broken in our health care system is not easy. Fixing what was broken on Wall Street is not easy. Fixing what's broken in our education system is not easy. We won't see results overnight. It may take a decade for these changes to pay off. But that's not a reason not to make them. 
It's a reason to start making them right now, to feel a sense of urgency, the fierce urgency of now. We also know that as significant as these reforms are, there's going to be one more ingredient to really make a difference. Parents are going to have to get more involved in their children's education. Now, in the past, even that statement has sparked controversy. Folks say, well, why are you talking about parents? Parents need help, too. I, I, I know that. Parents need jobs, they need housing.